Um, I'd like to call the uh, regular meeting of the Design Review Subcommittee Wednesday, May 25th, 2022 to order. Um, we have uh, Commissioner Steve Camp and Bart Crandall here at the meeting and um, we're hoping that uh, Commissioner McCann will show up. We have two sets of minutes to approve. Do we have any changes or a motion? I uh, move to oh, there, Scott. I vote to approve all sets. Okay. Um, I second the motion and take a vote. Aye. And aye, so it passes. So that's the t April 27th. And um, Commissioner McCann is here, so we will include you on the vote for the second set of minutes. I think. You did you guys just vote on that? We just voted on the first one. I have a change for that one. Um, I, I was not. I was absent. We, we can that. amend it. I was absent for that meeting, and it shows me as present. Oh, okay. I can have the admin update that. Okay, very okay. good. And the Thank second you for second set of minutes is for May 11th. Uh, do we have any um, changes or a motion? Well, May 11th was the one I was saying I was absent for. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so, um, the meeting of the 27th stays as voted on. The second one, um, uh, Commissioner McCann was not present at, and I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve the May 11th with the uh, change that... Um, I'll second. And uh, vote, uh, Commissioner Camp. Aye. And Commissioner Crandall's an aye. Um, I'm going to read real quick um, the preamble of what we do here. Um, sometimes we don't go through it, but I think it'll be good for everybody. The purpose of the subcommittee is to provide direction, insight, concerns, and options to the applicant on how the project can best comply with the city's design guidelines and or policies. The subcommittee is not an approving body. They make recommendations to the Planning Commission and Zoning Administrator regarding a project's compliance with city design guidelines. Each of the subcommittee members will provide input and suggest recommendations to the applicant based upon written city guidelines and or policies. The subcommittee will not design the project for the applicant, nor will the members always agree on the best course of action. The applicant can assess the input and incorporate any changes accordingly with the understanding that the subcommittee is simply a recommending body. Decisions to approve, deny, or modify a project are made by the Planning Commission, City Council, and Zoning Administrator with the input and recommendations from the subcommittee and staff. So I will leave it at that so you understand what we do here. Uh, our first item is Master Project 22089 Senior Housing and Medical Office, uh, 654 Camino de los Mares. And um, Ms. Savage is our city planner on this project. Um, and we'll start there. Good afternoon, dear C members and planning commissioners. I'm Jennifer. I haven't met all of you in person. Oh, let's introduce the whole okay. staff. Okay. Jennifer Savage, assistant to the city manager. Uh, Chris Williams, TCA Architects, uh, Director of Planning. I am Matt Morrill, also a TCA Architects. I'm Blaine Shear with C2 Collaborative with the Landscape Architects. Ted Fertone, Hunsucker and Associates, Civil Engineering and Entitlement Planning. We did a lot of work for yes. <laughs> I'm Bob Kim. I'm the project manager for this project, <coughs> development project manager. For the owner? For the owner, yes. And Scott McCann. McCann. Scott McCann. Yes. And Bart Crandall and Steve Kim. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jennifer. Thank you. So I want to point out two things um, before turning it over to the applicant team. Um, one is that we are here to get site and architecture feedback um, from you. And then the other thing is there are some uh, points of recommendation or input that staff is requesting. Those are located on pages eight and nine of your staff report. And the applicant team has been working to address some of those items that are in question. And I will go ahead and turn that over. Okay. That's good. Well, thank you very much for your time here, and uh, I really actually like that this intimate kind of setting. It's just more, uh, you know, collaborative and uh, brainstorm, the brainstorm, which I really appreciate. So we're here uh, to uh, present our changes. And Jennifer, first and foremost, we've worked very closely with Jennifer. She's, she had the planning uh, department has given us a lot of good feedback on, on the architecture 
we have been working on it for the past month, I would say, right? And uh, what we're here to uh, you know, present to you today are some of those proposed changes based on the comments that we have received. Uh, obviously, we met everybody here, so why don't we just turn it over to the TCA folks to uh, go ahead and start? Sure. It? Yeah, I'll start it. And um, do I just click through this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you absolutely can, or I can do it if you want to say next slide. Okay, yeah, if you could just, uh, I'll just let you okay. okay, so um, go ahead and hit the next slide. So this is the site, this is the, this, the existing site, and this is actually a tree survey on the site. And one of the things that we wanted to point out is that a lot of the perimeter trees that are currently on the site are going to be preserved. So there's going to be trees up along the slope over here, trees up in the corner, especially this pine that's up here, and then also trees up along the existing seniors project that are going to be preserved. But for the most part, the trees that are in the middle of the project are going to be going away because of the new development parking all the way around the site. Um, a couple things with this is that I wanted to kind of lay out the way that the site lay, uh, sits is that we've got the senior development over to the right over here and it's three and four stories and it's tearing down the hillside. We've got slope on the property going from this corner down to this corner of about 10 feet and then going across the, uh, the front of the property of about 10 feet. Um, we've used that grade in the latest design to go ahead and accommodate the architecture. Um, two other, one other thing is that we've got two entry points, one here and then one right here, and we've kept those existing entry points where they are. That entry point over there is for the senior complex. It's also going to be um, the entry coming into the MOB and into the back of the property, and this one stays exactly the same, and that's the main entry for the seniors. So if you could flip to the next one. So on this, uh, um, a couple things that I wanted to show is that We've got three and four story architecture. The three and four story architecture is kind of tearing down the hillside. And we're trying to bring the architecture that's four stories away from the hillside, or away from the, um, uh, uh, the street as much as possible. Um, the existing entry locations are exactly the same as what I talked about. Um, let's see, we've got pedestrian connections on the site as well. So our main pedestrian connections are going through the middle of the site <coughs> right here. And then we've got our main recreation area that's right at the back of the site. So this pedestrian area connects up over to here. We've also got pedestrian connections coming up down along the perimeter of the site and then also at the main entrance. Um, if you could flip to the next slide. So here's a, one of the changes that we made. Um, we went ahead and took the sidewalk up at the front of the property and we went ahead and made it 10 feet wide. Um, along with that, we've got existing trees that are up along the edge of the property. So we're utilizing those trees, but also putting in um, some additional plantings up there to go ahead and fill out the streetscape. We put in site furniture up at the front of the property. And as you can see, these the site furniture is kind of located right around in here. We've got a bench. We've also got a trash receptacle and some other things that are happening. But this is right off of this main bazaar that links up to our recreation area. And then this is our side connection. But this is really, we really do want to enhance that streetscape up along Camino because that's going to be the connection going over to the shopping center and also going that way on Camino as well. So this, this slide shows the open space and also the interior amenity space. So we've got interior amenity space that's a lobby, um, club room, and also fitness area that's in the purple right there. And that directly relates to our pool area that's at the back of the project. We've got the paseo area that comes through the middle, and this also direct, directly relates to the courtyards that are right over in here. And the courtyards are um, have a breezeway that's going through the building that's gonna go ahead and connect up to that central paseo. And then we've also got the green space that's up at the front of the project or the um, kind of the community space that's up there as well. But we wanted to have all these amenities and these green spaces really linking together in the middle of the project, to push the parking towards the edge of the project so people can kind of funnel towards the middle and then also walk up towards a community. Hi. Actually, can you go back one? Perfect. So, uh, one of the one of the site planning uh, values that we had on the site was to link the amenities to the pedestrian areas in such a way that uh, we were able to definitely take advantage of the site. The site is elevated above the five freeway, which is uh, down here. And so, as we go to the uh, next slide, you can see that the pool area 
um, is able to enjoy a Blue Horizon view, as well as uh, as we built the, the units and the amenity spaces, the clubhouse um, adjacent to the pool area. Uh, something that you can see in this view is that there is a rooftop amenity which will really take advantage of an almost 360 degree view of the space. And we were able to have other smaller amenities throughout this uh, space. This also gives a introduction to the architectural type, which is very typical of San Clemente. I don't know if we can click to the next. Um, in our original submittal that we had in, in March earlier this year, uh, you can see this is the uh, view along Camino de los Mares as we were looking eastbound and breaking the building up into, into several masses maintaining the sidelines as well as giving the majority of the of the immediate um, adjacency to the street a three level or three-story elevation to reduce its mass and its in, and visual impact uh, based on some comments that we had received there was guidelines that we were not fulfilling uh, of the break in the elevation and the setback between the second and third levels that there's a tiering and so we reintroduced the idea of putting covers over these arched covers over the deck space and as well as we implemented a brake line of coursework in, in a, a trim which helps to break up the space from being so vertical and stacked to incorporating uh, some more horizontal features into the elevation. And we can see that in, of course, the next slide, probably a little easier as we look at the westbound location for the project. Moving uh, on to, the, to the, this view, one of the things that, that was important was that pedestrian connection not being shared vehicular connection. We maintained the locations on either side of the site, as uh, Chris had indicated. And then we are able to celebrate the pedestrian connection into the Paseo with a view to the ocean, an unobstructed view without um, blocking that. As uh, you can see in, in this revised elevation, here's the impact that those covered shade uh, over the decks uh, for this between the second and third level uh, provides to that elevation. Went to the next. The main entry, as we come in, of course, we have a port of Can I interrupt for just a sec? Certainly. Sorry. Is the, is, what's in our packet, Jennifer, is that the latest version that he's talking about? Um, no, your comparison elevations are more limited than what he's presenting okay. today. Okay. Those are oh, uh, initial submittal. And right. then we, we will have these actually that uh, okay, awesome. awesome. We'll show that. Thank you. So in our original submittal in March, uh, not much has changed on the elevation. I think that we, we were able to bring a lot of the character to the, to the project. Uh, Portico share the pedestrian connection along the, the building here, uh, coordinated well with our landscape. Uh, revisions here as well is because we've added those covered decks on the front of the building, along the street, and that there are site lines where you would be able to see them. The, the portion of our building, which is four stories at the rear of the site, uh, it, we're able to bring those elements in and, and provide some variety in the mass. So, uh, just for some context, this is the project immediately adjacent to us. It sits at 660. This is a uh, senior housing in the villas, and we're, this is the side of the building that is facing our property. So, a couple of the things that we did in our design is we were able to mimic these wider arches as well as the material selection we're very uh, harmonious with that. This is the connect, This is the elevation that's on the street. Uh, they are able to have the landscape. There is a bit of a fire lane as it circulates around. But we were able to compare uh, the, the detailing and the material selections to what's adjacent. And then also, on our next slide, the project that was across the freeway, another senior housing project that uh, it's just recently been uh, permitted in the last two years. Uh, it's a four-story project, and it was, we were able to look at it and see some of the strategies 
that they used to help break up the large vertical mass. And so in our, our second middle, our recent middle of, of the elevations, we were able to take some of these cues that they were able to use and apply them to our building. And so in the last, just a refresher of, of the, the two main views in comparison to what is out there. It shows a, a project's cohesiveness to the community and it also um, fits the character and the details of the surrounding buildings. With that, we, we have actually the, uh, these printouts. Okay. If you could just pass them along. Now, these are active seniors. This isn't. These are active, no, this, these are active seniors, correct. So they'll be driving to and from. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there's 250? 250. 250 units, correct. Yes. Yes. correct. And what's the parking? I uh, believe it's in there. It's three. Senior units require one parking space per unit. Um, there is a manager's unit, so it's 249 senior units, one manager's unit. 249 parking spaces for the seniors, um, two parking spaces for the manager's unit, and then there's guest spaces, parking spaces on top of that, eight of which are on, on site, and the remaining 42 are, are proposed to be shared with the medical use. Oh, share with the medical building. Correct. There is a 7,500 square foot of medical office building that we're proposing as well. That's that separate. Right? Yes. So that's just yeah. one. Yes. Right. right on the front. Yeah. That's not a new building. That is a new, a new building. building. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. That's a new building. Do we see the um, elevations uh, of that building? Yes. That's and that's part of the lock split. Correct. Yes. And I can tell you. Part of the lock split. Last the middle lock split. Kind of right. Right. cutting that out. So it's your first set of plans that were included in your packet. And the design criteria compliance? Uh, no, but yes, that. Thank you. I'm finding the sheet number for you. Do you have a look? So we're opening, we're referencing the medical office building, which is on it sheet. It should be towards the end of the packet. Yes. Yeah, not, not today's, but the one. A-3.1. That's A-3.1. Uh, in the part of the mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I did that pretty, pretty good. And you're looking at carports or the garages? What are you looking for? The medical office building. No, I know. I was just thinking oh, for all the stuff here. surrounding. Uh, similar to the... Uh, to the adjacent site on the villas that we'll be looking at. So no storage for the tenants or anything. And not like an off, not an like an offsite or not like a garaged, like a closed garage for that. No. You'd be uh, vehicular storage only. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be solar on top of them too. Yeah, I mean, I you know those those things are kind of double-edged sword, right? Because I mean, you have the story. If you if you have the storage, then you can it can be an eyesore, frankly, because for people. Oh, so that's why since yeah. we don't have anything showing no. the carports, which is the full perimeter of the lot, mm -hmm. um, we kind of need to see that as part of the renderings. Okay. Okay. The rendering you've got of the um, main port cashier coming in. Mm -hmm. I think behind it, adjacent to the building, is that a carport? Or yeah. It was? Yeah, you can see kind of in all the dark spots They're around shaded. here. Yeah. These are all carports, right? So there's quite a bit of carports, so you okay. can definitely show that in the renderings. Yeah, I think for the parking count, each of the the parking stalls for each of the senior units, those are covered. Correct. So is that where the solar is going? or? Right, there's this shaded gray area, and these are all indicative of carports with solar panels on top. And so we'll provide you elevation so you can okay. uh, You know what I'm going to do? Let's do it. Let's um, ask, were there any public comments that anybody received since there's nobody here? No, I haven't received any. So let's uh, just do this as an open discussion meeting. 
uh, so we don't have to go through those sequences. And so any questions you've got, well, you when they come up, let's ask them as we okay. comments from staff. Yeah. You were okay. referring to, um, we went through the DMT one round, and so they were referring to the comments that we provided to that. And that's part of the changes that we're making here for the architectural comments. Yeah. There were, there were other comments in there as well, and we could talk about those if necessary, where it's talking about the parking lot quite a bit and coverage of uh, landscape, and we have made changes already, um, but we could talk about that too if we need to. Okay. Um, something that's going on here, I'll just do a, and this is for two of the commissioners. Point We've been through this process before where we processed a general plan amendment, a zoning amendment, and a project all at the same time. And it's been tough, typically. Um, there's some people you might want to talk to. Um, Mark McGuire, who's been through the project, and Mick um, did a, I wish I could remember his last name, did a, a mixed use project down in South El Camino and went through the same process. And the way it proceeded is we went through design review, went through um, planning commission, um, and with planning commission, we have findings we have to make and certain rules when it gets up to uh, city council, anything goes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, so it's really good to get um, you can do it two ways you can either spend a lot of time and money on architecture so it's not talked about because they'll do a design on the dais mm -hmm. which is real tough and they'll be responding to the public comments at the same time and it can get a little unwieldy mm -hmm. so another th thing to consider is using your building as a prototype say hey with this own change general plan amendment and so forth. This is the amendments. This is a prototype of what a building could look like. And our looking at doing this, but it's not finalized, so they don't start picking it or pick pick it on yeah. you. Um, something to consider. And those two gentlemen have processed these kind of things and know what the the pitfalls are and how to do it. And I think they'd be a good resource for you. Okay. Sure. Um, not as far as the architecture. But the process. Sure. Entitlements. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. one, okay. thing, you know, one thing that I want to make absolutely clear is that we are, um, Jennifer, there is no map of where we are, but uh, what we are doing in, in this process is we're changing the zoning back to the way it used to be, right? Yeah. And the general plan. So uh, what, if you look at actually... Uh, Going back to what, CC1? Uh, it'll be four. Four. Okay. Yes. And basically, if you look at the existing uh, previous zoning, what happens is it was a spot zone, basically, other than every, everywhere else, just surrounding it is, is all the same. Yeah. So we're just, just trying to conform with that. It's, it's just the plan. And that should be made clear right up front. And uh, because, you know, obvious because it was the unsaid word hospital site. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, there will be public comment sure. that could catch um, uh, council members' ears. Yes. So, uh, um, that said, let's go on with the building still. Thank you. And I guess, uh, I don't know, you guys probably both know this, but this site has been through the ringer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the city. Oh, it, it's a very high visibility piece <laughs> right. of property. Right. Yes. Um, so well, we're just looking at the architecture only. And the architect. I mean, so basically we can say up front, currently it does not meet the... Uh, codes or zoning, but we're going to consider it as what you're proposing Correct. Um, and assist you in complying with those because our job is to help applicants get through the process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, did any of the other team members want to present anything or Do you say anything about the landscape? I guess if you have, when you have questions or anything, anything yeah, specific, we'll, we'll have an open exactly. conversation sure. here. Just kind of your overall 
concept for the landscape? Oh, I think it's, um, I think overall concept is to try to um, help complement the architecture and improve the street scene and, you know, also work in a style that's consistent with what we see here in San Clemente with the use of, you know, common plants and trees that we, that you already see used here. So how does, how does the landscape enhance the streetscape on Los Mars? Well, I think it's, uh, first of all, it's the it's the replacing the existing sidewalk out there with a, a 10-foot wide sidewalk that meets the uh, um, design guidelines for, um, you know, the new developments and also provides the ADA access. There's um, proper clearances around the, the uh, street trees. And, and then I think, um, you know, beyond that, beyond back of walk, you know, as we develop this, it's really, it's, it's really, um, you know, integrating kind of layering of plants to help soften the edges and, you know, help complement the, complement the, the architecture and, and, you know, provide some, some buffer along the, the back of walk. So do you guys see this as a pedestrian friendly frontage for the project? I mean, I, I actually live right up above, so it's probably oh, helpful right. me. That's right. Sure. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so I think the concept was to provide a comfortable pedestrian environment, but not necessarily pedestrian focused. The design guidelines indicate this area as an auto-oriented area, so it's not as cushy, if you will, from a pedestrian perspective, that a pedestrian oriented location would be. And yeah. the other part of it is that, you know, when you, when you come up with a program for a project and you have the common spaces, you know, you either try to do something that's very active or past, you know, just more kind of serene. And in this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, obviously fit into the neighborhood, but also, you know, uh, for the types of uses that we have, we, you know, in other places we've had pochi bowls and all these different kinds of things. But, you know, this is more of a passive, you know, passive use it is what we do, what our team, what our team was. Well, a couple of things, you guys. Um, you're comparing, you know, this project to the senior housing next door, yeah. which which is assisted living. Assisted living, and there's a presumption that that's a good project. I think when you do that, which we don't necessarily agree with. <laughs> um, I wasn't here. I don't think I, I know it was. No, it's been there longer than any of us. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't see that as, as something you want to emulate? Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad that you gave that icebreaker because you know, we, well, we kind of think the same thing. But there's certain comparisons that we need to go ahead and have with it in a certain way to kind of fit in. But, um, yeah, there's certain elevations on there that we want to do on ours. Yeah, I think that, you know, Los Mares, especially at this location, is a, it's a hodgepodge, right? I mean, there's, yeah. it's a break. there's a lot of, I guess you could call them mistakes, um, or unfortunates that you know, you know, we're here to try and bring up mm-hmm. a level Absolutely. of architecture on, in this location. So there's not that much, to be honest with you, on the street close close to the site that we would say that's a good solution. And people do walk on this part of mm-hmm. those bars. I mean, they go across the street at the Starbucks location mm-hmm. where you see a lot of people <clears throat> on the street and and so I think that that does need to be considered more even if it's it's not part of you know the, you know, the zoning or you know the recommendation I think there's an opportunity here to do that and you guys have it's a, I mean it's a big site it's six six point yeah, six, six acres six and a half acres um, but yeah, one thing that we did try to do, Blaine, is that we have some uh, benches out there and then what have you, they're doing out, have some art, um, some furniture. Yeah, the, the, That's furniture, correct. the furniture is uh, right around the main entry. Right right the the bottom there. right. There's a blow up right below. Right, right, right below there, right there. Right out, those, those things. Blaine, why don't you talk about those? Sure, well, I think, um, you know, that's kind of the, the uh, termination of the um, main pedestrian link through the side. So I think our thought was, um, you know, to, that that would be a good spot. It's roughly in the middle of the site from, you know, east to west, that that would be a kind of a good spot to, you know, provide a place for people that are um, 
coming from within our side or that are crossing, you know, on the on the uh, public sidewalk, that there would be some amenities there, a place for them to sit down if they had, you know, um, were carrying something trash they needed to get rid of. There'd be a waste receptacle, and uh, you know, it's just sort of a little turn uh, turn off where where people could where people could rest, and then um, you know, the the maintenance of that would be taken care of um, by the development. It's about 500 feet to the bus stop, correct? I don't mean to dominate. No, this is an open conversation. We can they, jump in any time. I think you've, you know, you've made a good attempt at trying to open up you know, the street from Los Mares to the view, which, you know, unfortunately, that shopping center mm -hmm. you know, cuts it off completely. And mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's a marginal attempt, I don't know if that's you know necessarily right, but because it feels to me like just looking at that that layer there at the front that it's it's I mean it's pretty massive, you know, right on the street. Because you've got that whole front edge which is like that's three stories right there. It's three stories at the start. Okay. Which I think that's a good idea to step it, you know, as you get yeah. back towards the rear. But it doesn't to me it doesn't really feel like you're being drawn into the to the property. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're turning your back on it to, to some degree. And I know that you've got, you know, you're trying to get some density mm -hmm. at this location sure. for it to pencil, you know, it needs to <laughs> have a certain number of units. I get that. Um, but it, it feels a little bit massive right there. I mean, that's why most of your renderings are from the view side, it looks like. Well, because that's where it opens up. And I get that. That's, that's important. But I think that, you know, the community... Um, the people that are going to be looking at this thing, first of all, they're not going to like the traffic that it's going to generate. We don't, I don't think we need to talk about that too much. Um, no. Because we've got like five signals um, within about half a mile <laughs> on those Mars, and people are going to perceive that to be, wow, now you've got 250 more units coming in right here. How can we kind of moderate that, you know. Um, you know, that's it's pretty dense. And, and again, you know, maybe this thing goes swimmingly, but I think Bart kind of hit it that there's going to be a lot of resistance to a project like this that's this dense at this yeah. location. I mean, if it was further, even if it was further down close Mars, I think there'd be, you know, possibly, it might possibly go easier. But I think you're going to get a lot of opposition about the density. And if it's perceived to be dense, which I think it is, from Los Maras, then that's going to kind of strengthen that argument against it, if that makes sense. So we're here to help sure. you know, yeah, that, that, get you a project that's, that's going to be able to get approved. That was kind of why I was saying, you know, a prototype, then you can kind of test the waters. Sure. Um, the one, the other senior one that's in construction now down the hill that you referenced, yeah. um, I think did uh, we worked really hard with them to get a good-looking, massive building uh, done, and it's down in pretty much a hole. There's yeah. no public street along it, no, and yet they did a pretty good job. And I think this one's going to have to not just match it but surpass that look. Um, in terracing back either the, the upper levels or whatnot and variations. Um, you're going in the right direction. I mean, th this particular elevation is, is working on it. Um, and uh, I think that's going to be pretty important. Um, I think uh, how the parking is handled, since it's going to be visible from the street, um, Another thing is, we don't like to talk about it, but uh, um, security for the site um, and uh, possibly homeless, the shopping centers have had a problem with that. Okay. And um, being able to control some of your outdoor, outside spaces from being uh, used for that purpose are difficult. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, the, one of the things that we originally looked at with the site is that um, when we were doing the first initial studies, we were looking at actually a gated community. 
But you know, the gated community also brings up other problems because um, it kind of forces or it, it you know it closes off the entire community to the entire frontage too. We looked at maybe doing gates up along the front of the community, but one of the things that we really wanted to do is have the architecture live on the street, so it gives a nice view. So that's the reason that we kept it ungated. But I think that like that center facade, you would have to secure that and other parts of the site. So. Um, beyond that, I don't think that we would be putting any other gates to go ahead and keep people out. Well, the issue, the issue with that is that it's actually directly what uh, you two commissioners just mentioned is a little bit of counter to each other in some ways. Because on one hand, you want to be more welcoming and receptive, I get that, and on the other hand, you do want to kind of put a but on it. Yeah. You, you can make an open space that isn't um, pedestrian accessible necessarily, but visually it is, okay. where things open up. And whatnot. So, so visually, uh, visually, uh, that's a, a, relief, relief. a relief to, yeah. to the eye. Is what you're yeah. saying. And Jennifer, um, a project like this, how many uh, affordable units are going to have to be in here? You're the specialist on this one. Uh, so, our inclusionary housing program requires four percent, and in this case, that would be ten. At okay. The very low income level. And they're aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and how does this help? I think a, a big point would be our uh, housing element numbers, arena numbers, and so forth. So the benefit to the city versus you know we want to tout mm -hmm. as many benefits this has to the city yeah. as we can. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so the arena allocations that were um, provided are not required to be built. Um, we were only required to plan for those. And in, from that perspective, this site was helpful in planning for those housing units because the, the property owner was interested in creating a housing development on the property. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, it, it does help um, the housing. So this one's already been in those numbers as potential housing. Correct. That rezone, keep Correct. that in mind. That, sure. um, yes. That's one of the reasons it's helping the city. Yes. In, in, in fact, actually, um, it, it was in the housing element uh, of, of the last last uh, round of housing element, and I believe um, this site was designated for what three hundred thirty units or three hundred forty units. It was. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the number was. Um, so there's two different components to that. Sure. One is the number assumed in the traffic study, sure. um, which was the higher over 300, based okay. on 45 units per acre, which is mm -hmm. the density assumed for a senior housing development in mm -hmm. our zoning code. And then the environmental document and the housing element um, specifically considered a number of, I believe it was 239 units. And that's based on the historic uh, development for housing, where our sites in San Clemente are typically developed at the maximum number of units. You usually see on average 80%. So that 239 comes from an 80% assumption. So we're you know, right on the right line. So, I mean, so everything you present needs to um, remind everyone reviewing it what the benefits are. Sure. Yes. Well, and the, and the council will know that, but it's also to, but to it has, try and inform it, it the public. It has to go yes, yes. Through, through, the comments. through us and through Planning Commission, because we want to avoid, if we can, having it designed one step above where findings don't have to be part of the equation. Sure. Um, and like I say, the two names I gave you... Um, I think when Jonathan gets here, he'll know Nick's last name. Buchanan. Buchanan, thank you. Um, he has a perspective on doing a simultaneous project, too. So, okay. help you with those hurdles a little bit. Sure. And they're both good guys. Um, Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire. Baseball player. Yeah. Baseball player. There you go. He, this one's a <laughs> wee bit smaller than McGu Mark McGuire. <laughs> 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 I think Mark has kind of shrunk since then. But <laughs> I, I really value uh, Steve's comment on the um, trying to step things back a little bit is always important. There, in other areas that um, people look at, the um, Henry Lenny guidelines for Spanish colonial revival mm -hmm. keep talking about. Stepping it back, stepping mm -hmm. it back, stepping it back, and opening up. Well, I think um, you, have, you have an opportunity here because you've got the frontage and you've got the view. Yeah. So that it could sort of step back, 
even towards that central mm -hmm. courtyard in the front, mm -hmm. and then open up again in the back. I see. And still get some of that density kind of at the center mm -hmm. of the site. Because mm -hmm. I think it would really benefit you guys to be able to sort of enhance that view out to the ocean. <laughs> Everyone feels like it's sort of been cut off by a lot of these other projects. Sure. And so that, I think, would go a long way mm -hmm. to getting people on the excitement program for this one. Does anyone have any feedback on their two alternative elevations? where they were um, attempting to comply with our design guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the alternative they provided so that you have that um, physical Yeah, I, I think it's far better. And, you know, the tower, for for me, for some reason, it just feels a little uncomfortable. This one? Um, well, the proportion is, is, is off. Yeah. Okay. I, I think there's, I actually, I like to do this. I brought a couple of images of if you've got them, good projects. And maybe we can look at those and just kind of talk about why we think these are good projects. This is up in um, Santa Barbara, so obviously we don't have those beautiful mountains in the backdrop. But you can see that the, the massing is very um, is varied quite a bit. Um, you don't have just this sort of extruded wall of you know vertical mass, but it sort of steps back. This does have a variety of Features. I mean, it, you know, it's basically white plaster with with the tile roof. But if you go to the next one, you can see how there's this layering that goes vertical and horizontal. Mm -hmm. I think that's very effective, even though that's right on the sidewalk, um, at least which is a pedestrian sidewalk. There's some landscape in front of that, so there's this layering that occurs from the street, which I think you could do there. You have enough space um, and have some of these sort of decks that are part of the architecture instead of just having them sort of punched in mm -hmm. to a vertical wall. Next, go to the next one. This, you know, the reason I put this is actually one of my projects, but uh, you can see there's there's a variety of even the proportion of the openings. You see at the lower levels, you've got the narrower openings and then the larger ones at top, there's a kind of a layer cake feel with the textures. You can see how the balconies are kind of engaging different forms, but there's void space and there's solid space. And then, so it doesn't feel like just a vertical extrusion. Mm -hmm. So I think there's some potential for you guys to do that kind of thing. I'm not suggesting necessarily that you put these turret forms, but that's there's some textures there that I think are, are helpful. And in this project, we had a plinth with the you know, podium. Mm -hmm. And so we had this large sort of arched openings. So even though this is you know, five stories of architecture, it doesn't feel as massive. So and then I think I might have had one more. Which project is that? It's called the Montecito. It's actually up in Walnut Creek. Mm -hmm. That was Former life when I used to do there residential, a lot more residential. So those other ones I second. Those are the only ones. Yes. Okay. Just I think I mean you guys get the right. Yeah. You know, the just. I don't know if you agree with. I do, and you know the more wow factor you can give the elevation, the less architecture is going to be in the future or meetings. Sure. And they we like three hundred sixty degree well, three hundred sixty degree architecture and. Um, some overlook looking down on this thing. We've uh, got to make sure the roofs aren't too massive. And I think you'll address address that with these uh, building shapes. Um, but the front along the street is going to be the primary function. You've got the porcachere in there and things, but uh, anything we can do to to break up the uh, break, yeah. break up the massing. And and add variety to the two uh, right Yeah, there was a big trend um, when we were doing uh, design guidelines for downtown. They kept on talking about canyonization. Okay. You know, going along the street, having, you know, can we have this kind of building on all four, uh, both sides of the street? And, you know, nobody was going for that. Uh, I so think the landscape, too, you can... That really helps. It, you know, yeah, you can, you can do some low level, but then I, it, it'd be great to see some vertical landscape so it sort of breaks up the 
the mass on the street there. Okay. Um, you might need a little more depth. Even I like the idea of the ten foot sidewalk that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's just all concrete there, but maybe there's a way to kind of poke into that with landscape, so that you've got some trees that are starting low, and, then, and so that gives you that layering, that vertical layering that you're looking for as well. That could be real helpful. And, and even the uh, space between the buildings. I mean, we've got uh, three and four story, I think, down that whole thing. Some kind of articulation there might either s stepping back a little bit or uh, it just seems like a long, narrow. Well, especially uh, this space. So one structure that's got looks like one, two, three. It's got about eight units on the front there. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty vertical. Yep. At that location. Okay. I think, you know. I like the idea of what you did on the other one where there's, I don't know how many units you have. Offset a little bit. But it's, it's perpendicular to the street, so you get those kind of gaps, you know, in between. Maybe there's a way to open that up. So you want to actually sort of, uh, from, from a visual perspective as you're driving, it's not a bang, 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 but, but there's, a, there's a break in your mm -hmm. eye vision. Well, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. people do walk. It's surprising. You see a lot of people walking and having their bikes okay. and stuff. So there's, it's not... I, mean, I ride my e-bike down there. It's a little scary. My wife won't do it, but uh, <laughs> it'd be nice, you know, if it felt a little more comfortable to to sure. as a pedestrian. Sure. Can I ask a few things, please? Jennifer, the tables, the well, you said something about we're comparing to the, what they're asking for on the zoning relative to our comments. That's um, yes, but um, this project is. So basically, we we agree it doesn't meet it. Something's going to have to change. Right, either um, the project or the zone. And right, right. That's okay. The two. So it, it okay. Does, as it currently stands, it, it doesn't. But we're we're designing to what what it's going to be. Correct. Correct. So, so so that's my question, Jennifer. In the in the staff report, you have like a matrix table. It says okay, this does not comply. That does not comply. Specifically, like the heights and things. Would those be a yes if they get the zone change approved? No, so as of right now, it looks like they would be over height, but there's two points to that. One is they have not provided a height analysis the way that we measure height in San Clemente, where you take the four points the and average it. Right. So that finding that it's not consistent is just based on grade to top of the roof. Okay. So that could change. And then the second point is that because they're providing affordable housing units, they may have the opportunity to... Um, to request additional height beyond what the code would be, CC4, um, based on the fact that they're providing those affordable units, it's through the density bonus ordinance, and it would be an incentive or concession that they could ask for. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm kind of focusing on is, since we don't know the answers to those things, we can focus on the character and mm -hmm. direction they're going with the um, architecture, but not the specifics yet. Okay, but I mean, height is an issue. I, I don't particularly have a problem with it, um, but it, it can be a hot button issue for people. Sure. Uh, I mean, I appreciate the view study that you guys did. Yes. Showing that it's well under the, you know, the ocean view of the units above. Um, yeah, plus I think that's a great point. And, and there's a perception of height that you can enhance, you know, or you can make it worse. Right? I mean, if it's that's why I think you can hit those heights in the middle, um, but on the street, you know, if, if you drop it down, you can, it's just the way people see things. Mm -hmm. And we understand, you know, at this table, that you never really look at a building in an, an, an elevation. Yes, yes you don't. An elevation, <laughs> right? Correct. And that's why these renderings are helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but people are going to look at those, and, and if you can. Use it as a tool yeah. to try and break down that map. Yeah, or maybe, for line. example, you, you, you show, hey, I'm, I'm height compliant on the front, you know, 150 feet of the site, and where, my, where I'm over is on the back down by the freeway, and you can't see it because Correct. the site tails away. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, Although the freeway is not unimportant here, I think, because. Well, that's another one of my comments. Okay. Is um, do, do we want to kind of have some treatments on the five, the facade facing the five, the, 
I, and I'm, I haven't had time to look at the new versus uh, the Traditionally, old. that is definitely taken into account. Uh, it has been on South El Camino Real on the architecture. And when the um, uh, outlets, hmm. it was very hmm. hot ticket item. And this is, you know, um, got just as much exposure as those. Right. So it definitely um, got to be 360 degree architecture and take that into account. Well, it's pretty close to the off ramp there at uh, the strip right. as you're going north. Mm -hmm. So when you see so it as the exit, yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be looking at it. It was even an issue on the um, shopping center on the other side off um, the freeway um, where Sprouts and whatever it is over there. The one on the Crumble, Sprouts, yeah. the. Um, uh, and some of the city Indians. council members were around. When that was going through, and it was, they were concerned about the height and yeah. look of it. So, well, and that's uh, that's actually a pretty good example. I mean, it's, they improved that center a lot, oh, big time, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But architecturally, they I think they're pretty, mm -hmm. pretty successful. The, you guys talked about the one view corridor down the pedestal, the Paseo or Correct. whatever. I'm thinking, based on the site plan, that you also have view corridors down the drive aisles as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so I would highlight those. And, and that's well. kind of why I was saying I hope the, there's some architecture to the, the car covered to the car car carports. Um, in landscape. And, and yeah. landscape. Okay. I mean, this is a big enough project that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to try to give you guys too much work, but a, a scale model. Um, might be helpful, just especially because you've got our development up above there at the sea point. A lot of people are going to be looking down. You know, fortunately, I'm further back. I, mm -hmm. I see that, but um, not that I would want to see the project, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, it might be something you might want to consider. I don't know when was the last time. Well, actually, um, Commissioner, if you want to, if you want to just show it, just, just I think we ought to just, just. Um, we I don't actually, think we need to see. Yeah, it we, we have done, done a few simulations, simulations from from because now we got the. Um, and I'm not even talking about a finish yeah. model. Something shows the massing, it shows oh. how it, how it's addressing all the different you know views, so that you can kind of play up that three dimensional. Well, uh, what I, why don't we just show the view sims? And, and so, so, you, so we don't we don't necessarily nowadays with te computer technology can actually show the perspectives, and you can actually see oh, off the massing. Show. Yeah, off yeah. The, you know, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and watch um, that short? So we've got. You can do it? Yeah. You, have to it. you can plug it in here, I think. Here it is. It's on, it's on this one. You got it. So, because we were actually very, very. We just wanted to make sure we address it because it is important to us. So we wanted to make sure we studied it. And while she's trying to find that, one reason I brought up Mark McGuire and all is uh, you were aware of the. Um, what was it? Amazon? building at one time trying to go in. Mm -hmm. It got so much public comment just from publicity, whether it was good, bad, or sure. different. You know, they, they eventually just threw up their hands and said, it's not going to work. You want to avoid being put in that position. Sure. Um, and that's why I thought McGuire and uh, Mick would be good guys. Uh, Jonathan, um, uh, Mark McGuire and uh, Mick... Um, Developer, he's on uh, Buchanan. Nick Buchanan. Um, he might be able to give you a way to at least uh, pick their brains a little bit. Sure. Um, and then uh, the other thing is, we, we actually oh, have uh, it in there. No. hired a uh, PR consultant to actually do a lot of reach outs. Good. In fact, we're doing that right now. So I think that would be very helpful too. Sure. And it'll be a lot easier for us to review once they it's determined what the proposed heights and uh, uh, so forth are, uh, so we can get down to detail. Right now, with that the warm fuzzy feeling going, 
Well, the we interesting thing is actually if you, if you look down. at the roof line of that building to the left, actually, you'll see that it's just a consistent roof line. Oh, I know. Yes, because it drops off so much. And, right. then, and then, you know, the other side, there is a little bit of whatever, but, um, you know, we try to be sensitive to that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good what not to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We connect up one of our computers to this. The other thing I want to mention that we haven't talked about is the medical office building. Mm -hmm. Is it too large to um, It's not very fine. Like it, I don't, you know, it looks like yeah, I forgot to use it. Yeah, I think one that. And yeah. The one I said yesterday? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Scott. I think that. It looks like you're trying to match the neighboring building. It looks building. like a different project. Yeah. And I think you could help yourself by maybe connecting those visually sure, a little bit more. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and, you know, even across the, the other one we looked at that has the ice cream. I got it. Sure. Go oh, handles. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a more elegant yes. building. There's also a couple, another one that's kind of looks like sure. it's on the, uh, it's been approved within the last two years on the, um, Community Outdoor Island. Community Outdoor Exit. There's a dental building, then there's a mixed use across the street, and there's another one going in on the other corner. Okay, and one. that being a gateway, mm -hmm. uh, okay. the city's uh, architecture okay. for gateways okay. is up to the standard that uh, this one should be. Okay. What is that? Uh, what, do you know what it's called? Or anything? Uh, I don't. Okay. Um, Planning can help you. But uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Jennifer can look those up. Oh, the three projects off the El Camino Real exit there. There's the dental offices. There's the one across the street that um, uh, is a restaurant mixed use office. Yeah. And then yeah. something's being proposed, I think, on the other corner. And those are good examples of um, the architecture you can follow. Okay. Good examples. So can we get back to the, the tables again so that how you doing time? Oh, uh, yeah, 20 minutes. 15, 15 minutes. Did you want to be here for Jonathan's item as well? Uh, I think these two can handle Okay. Wow, what a confidence. I got all the confidence in that for you. <laughs> so, the, so the tables that are in here, I'm just looking at these that were in our packet. I mean, the first one, that's just the medical office program. Right? But then the second page here, page four, it shows. Like top, top of plate, top of roof, three stories. And it says senior, it doesn't comply. So what's that based on? Is that so other? That's, that's what we were talking about earlier, where right now that finding is based on grade to top of roof. Oh. But in San Clemente, we look at height. Yeah, on average. Right, on average. So that could change. OK. So there wasn't time to do that, or you just haven't gotten it was a comment um, in their comment letter for DMT, and they're working on providing it. I got it. Okay. And the same thing with, I think I saw something in here on the. Is there a way that. Um, exactly. Is it? Okay. We connected into your computer with this. Yes, but my computer isn't displaying on the screen. Oh, it's not. Okay. So, I mean, we can turn it this way if you wanted to. Or yeah, email it to her if it, there's something going on with our email. Yeah. yeah. I think just the file we'll is really big. And why, why don't you bring the hard copies? I think we, cannot, we cannot leave the hard copies here, but we, we have hard copies for you guys to take a look at. For okay. Very good. Why don't you go ahead and bring that? Oh, yeah. So I, we we were thinking that as, as far as height is concerned, there may be some uh, an issue that you know just that that could be a concern. So we want to make sure that we do it. And with the modern technology, frankly, you know you can kind of see it from where you are and, and angle and everything kind of generates it. And and so that's what we've done is what does it look like now and what what would it look like with the with the proposed so that way. It's and the equipment well. screening and all will be looked at yeah. very carefully. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the way that we uh, went ahead and presented it is that we took Google Earth and we took some views in Google Earth and then we went ahead and pieced our model into that view. And what we did was um, there's that first street that runs up in back of uh, the industrial, or not the industrial, but the commercial right back over there. Mm -hmm. And we took three shots over there and then we took another shot one street up from that, just so you can kind of get a view for that. 
but it really shows that you know the impacts really aren't that there's really no impact you do see the structure but we also showed a comparison of what's there now compared to what's going to be there in the future and you know you'd rather look at this instead of a, the top of a hospital <laughs> so a blight <laughs> Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you're going to get there's there's a huge contingent of people that really wanted that to be, continue to be a hospital. Sure. Even sure. though so they're going to be against somewhat subtle, no matter what you do. Doesn't mean they accept that. It's, it's been national news. Yeah, there's not there's not much you can do about this because right. Right. You know, right. Yeah, we we we've been documenting and taking yeah. taking note of a lot of the comments that have even gone through so far. Okay, so. We leave it. I think it's public record, so we just want to just be able to share it and probably collect it. But yeah. and this is what this is oh, what's called a view simula simulation. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah, you have a fourth and um, walk you through it. Okay, you can you can walk me through it. Absolutely. So on the first uh, page, we have a, we have we have a section that shows uh, the height. The, the street location as it comes up, and then also what the view is currently here mm -hmm. uh, and looking down, and then what it would look like with our project as model. So the key map kind of shows where it is over on that first street right. that you're looking. Okay. You see the that's, section. That's that's the this is like view. the, I believe, the uh -huh. first The first is like the seventh house, I believe, up the street. Okay. And it's right with the, where it's front and center. But that street kind of goes up. As you're As going over there, and um, so we want to show you what they're going to do. Is it? We're more than 500 feet away, I hope. Yeah, more than a thousand. Okay. So the, the second, the second image is taken a little bit lower, like the the third or fourth street on that, uh, okay. or third or fourth home on that street, and you can see where the the building does come up closer to the horizon line by that stage. And in my opinion, that is the worst case scenario. Is that second image? Uh, for the neighbors. The third sheet is uh, for the two or three first homes on that street are currently not able to even see the site because of the existing office building, mm -hmm. which obscures their vision from it. And we showed before and after being essentially the same shot. This, uh, this one, the second to last one, is taken from the second street up. So you, this would be, I think, believe closer. You said your home is that second street. Um, well, I'm on the front edge. Mine is at the very top of Campanile. Oh, okay. So, so you, yours might be the, this might be the closest view to to believe yours would, would be at, at this height and elevation. In which case, you can see that uh, the vast majority of blue waters is right. uh, obstructed. And then the last page. And the last page is, I believe, that's, is that's that third street, isn't it? It's quite a, quite a ways up Thank at you. the top. Um, yeah, so it's the top of the, of the third street up, and you can see. Uh, and this this is a, a great illustration of the, the roofs that you will see versus the exposed equipment of now we just, the hospital. Now, we just had on um, the... Memory care one up there by the church. Um, some views also that uh, if you want to show them what we've seen in the past, uh, that might be a reference for them. That what people have become accustomed to seeing. Yeah, I think this is helpful. Um, well, it's, it's, you know, picture tells a that, you know, it's just a thousand words. I mean, people are often frightened by what they don't see or know. So, you don't want to show it. In, in the interest of time, sure. maybe we should jump to the kind of questions slash recommendation guidance list that Jennifer had for us. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, I, I think we can't, you know, I don't want to get into saying, you know, yeah, you shouldn't have that gable in that or whatever. I mean, we aren't anywhere near ready to get to any kind of detail on that. It's um, uh, the big things on the building. So uh, if you have some comment, please uh, jump in with them. 
you know, whether it's a gray awning or a... Assess what mature trees can be retained. Yeah. Was so there some con question specifically or... Yeah, so um, there was a question on uh, if there were any mature trees on site, and if so, complying with the design guidelines, which ones they were keeping. And um, they went back and did a, an arborist analysis, and they are keeping the, the mature trees that they can on site, um, in addition to the perimeter trees. Uh, the second thing was in regards to bicycle facilities. <clears throat> they might be racks, or they might be lockers, since this is more of a residential uh, area. Uh, so you want a longer storage capability, and the applicant is working on that. Um, the third one regarding the public sidewalk being 10 feet, the applicant, is, uh, you'll see in the revised plans, they will provide a 10-foot sidewalk. There'll be a two-foot easement on the private property to provide that. Uh, street lighting trees and furniture, so they are adding trees to the tree scape uh, along the, the street depending on what the changes are to the street itself after the traffic studies um, analyzed, we may talk about what street, uh, what trees are going in the median. Uh, and they added furniture towards that main pedestrian uh, entryway to the site. The third and fourth stories, uh, setting those back from the first and second we've talked about. Then there were two questions of materials. They are working on a materials board. The detail is um, the windows, would they be wood or metal as required by the design guidelines? And with the terracotta roof tiles, would they be clay or something else? Any recommendations on materials? Well, wood, wood, wood windows on a building like this would just be a kind of a maintenance nightmare. Yeah, it, yes. we have used fiberglass, not vinyl, but um, yeah. fiberglass in the past. Okay. Um, and that's part of the guidelines. Um, in the pedestrian zones, we've gone um, wood on the first floor where people can touch them, but anything above that, but I don't think we need to go to that excess on this one. Um, that was where there was storefronts and whatnot, um, uh, fiberglass above that. So no, wood is just a maintenance hog and you don't want to go there. And similar to the roof material, would you require clay, or could there be an alternative material given the height of the building? I, I would not give an exception to it if it's required by the zone. Um, it's a guideline. I would probably hold to it. Okay. But that's um, because we've required others to do the same. I mean, we, we've had... Um, Starbucks had to do it, mm -hmm. you know. The deli had to do it, so, but, although they haven't done enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. Keep what was the contract? Clay or? Or an alternative. So we wanted a, a feedback from the DRC about okay. material. So it sounds like it's clay. Clay yeah, is what you that, That's kind of a the hat on top of the, the projects okay. in town. Okay, so clay, and then you're talking about possible fiberglass, you know, windows. That seems to be because otherwise you're going to be replacing. And those yeah, will, uh, yeah. will, will and maintenance on a third and yeah. fourth floor. You <laughs> don't want to do it. Uh, and then we talked about parking setbacks and also landscaping within the parking, and the applicant is working on modifying their plans to meet the, the guideline uh, objective standards for that. And then the last one was in regards to private and common open space. And we did present what the uh, project is providing in terms of common open space, and the applicant is working on providing additional detail in terms of private open Very space. Good. Very good. And I'm thinking on the garage of the carports. Um, you know, the ones next door, well, there aren't any next door. There are some. There are. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're, they're right. Uh, you know, whole and flat uh, roofs. Assistance living. I would think anything visible from the street is going to have to be some architecture. Okay. Now, well, when you get around the back, it could be yeah, more economical. Yeah, it could be a long run of it. Um, again, landscape, if you can incorporate it, even where vines can mm -hmm. grow up on the mm -hmm. end wall, or you can try to modulate it a little bit so it isn't just this, you know, long run. I know you get the solar. On those, it's right. quite limited with what you don't know, want vines growing over. Yeah, but when we have an elevation like that, I think there's a, was shown a garage up here somewhere. Um, 
on the site plan. It's, yeah, it's actually over. And, you know, those need to be architecture rather than mm -hmm. just a pole of, you know, pole columns yeah. and a flat roof. Okay. Hopefully we gave you quite a bit. Now, is this a <laughs> formal application at this point, or is this is. an intro meeting? Okay. Yep, formal application, but we did anticipate that it would come back to DRC Excellent. twice. Excellent. Got your um, recommendation. Yeah, so we wanted to take in your recommendations, make some modifications, and come back for our final recommendation. And for the record, you know, I think that the new versions are, you know, definitely an improvement over what I saw. I was, you know, Gonna have some comments on that, and I haven't, you know, really looked at and absorbed the new ones, but sure. definitely trending in the right direction by by recognizing and addressing those things. Yeah, one last thing I would say is that if you're gonna show, you know, images that you're emulating, I wouldn't show the stuff that you put in here. <laughs> um, find good projects. There are good projects in and around San Diego. Of course, um, up in Santa Barbara. Sure. Um, even yeah, I brought one in from Walnut Creek, some people don't work yeah. I, I did a project with Sa uh, San Mateo, actually it's St. Matthew's place, and that was that was uh, uh, Spanish style, that is the Santa Barbara style for sure. Yeah, and then show of, how... A lot of articulations and mm -hmm. the windows. Because I think there's an opportunity here to say, look, we're we're enhancing Los Mares, because Los Mares is, it's, you know, it needs some help. <laughs> it's one of our more brutal yeah. streets. It's it would kind of is. Mm -hmm. It would be wrong for me to get up and to say, like how ugly our neighbor is, because many of your no, residents no, no, might no, be there. No, no, so, no. so we 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 included some of that, and and a lot of that is implied. Is like you know, by comparison, you know, look at look at where we're going to where we were 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Things are getting a whole lot better. This is a, a heritage project that is that, mm -hmm. that is there. This is the environment that will be that we'll be working next to. So. Well, and that was you what specifically, you though, pointed to that project and yeah. said we're emulating the, yes, the right. Right. whatever. Avoid that. You it's, don't have yeah. to, you know, okay. you don't even have to, because that's not a well-liked project <laughs> right. okay. Okay. on that street. Well, we, we actually so. had a conversation as we said, is anybody in the committee, did they approve that project? No. Like, how, how long ago <laughs> yeah, was it? it? We didn't want to insult anybody. The so. villas have been there a long time. <laughs> mother-in-law. Like, Especially like all the years. solar panels just sitting on the hill there. Yeah. It's really sensitive. I remember those going in yeah. and then yeah. drives down yeah. to San Diego. Yeah. All the stuff we have. We inherited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an idea. And, you, and you're, improving, knows you're improving, improving on top. That's another That's thing right. that you mentioned that is, you know, there's nothing to really identify this project. I mean, it fits, okay. Yeah. But it doesn't really have a strong identity. Okay. And you might want to think about incorporating that okay. somehow. Even that one project that had up there, the Paseo or whatever, mm -hmm. it had, you know, it had a, a pretty strong identity. And uh, I think that's helpful, too. Okay. Well, that's, that's why I was saying the prototype thing where it's not total function. So you can really show some, this is what it could look like. Sure. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. get a little wow factor to it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, get people excited. Okay. That's your job. Yep. Yeah, I and we'll help you any way we can. <laughs> Thank you. And I think once we get the heights, so we can say, okay, this, this is the height we're going to be. The density's right. Um, I think uh, the office building needs um, some yes. work. Look at all the new little projects that are going in around the, okay. the um, El Camino Real exit, uh, the Starbucks. The if you can believe it, the In and Out Burgers not. Terrible, but it was <laughs> a stretch to make something out of that one. <laughs> Did you grant them the crossed palm trees? Did you count no. it as signage? <laughs> yeah, signage. Um, but uh, uh, a good start. Thank you so Great. much. Yeah, yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. We're here to help. Um, okay, Jonathan. Are we going to take this um, Anything sure. difficult? Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you. You I'm gonna turn the meeting over no, to Steve. No, I've got to Jeff.
Yes. Yeah, yeah, so no. No. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So you're in charge. This is how the job is. Push and pull there is always I got to be up to seals on El Toro. I got to be up to Granddaughter. Right. How old is your granddaughter? This one's 10. Oh. That's the place she chose, and that's where we're going. What's she doing? Barbecue. Celebrating something? Just for visit from Sicily. Oh, two okay. weeks. Oh, it's our nice. chance to see rather than the other side of the fence. Oh, oh, nice. Lucky you. Well, so I think it was very helpful. Yeah. Just enjoy. Okay. Well, thank you so much for all your. All your I mean, honestly, oh. very good talk. Good. You've got a good project team, and uh, I'm sure we can get the architecture to fit. Yeah, then you get to deal with the other stuff. Sounds great. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, cool. and I hope you have one more time. Oh, the other grandkids are right here. Thank you so much. I see them. Our pleasure. I see them all the time. Nice to meet you. 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 Bye, guys. Good job. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys. Take care. Thank you. All right. Should we go on our second new business? Yeah. Yeah. Do that. We worked with Jennifer personally for number of years. Okay, moving on to the. Should we go to Mr. Kendall? Step down. Please. Okay. Thank you. Is that enough? Yes. Yeah. You just know. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to move. You just okay know that. <laughs> make a motion that it's okay for just, him to leave. You just noted it. We'll allow it. They'll note it. The, they'll note it in the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Crandall ditched. All right. Let's, so let's take a look at the uh, 2022 and 2023. Park led dining exception request is what we're looking at. Yes, okay. correct. That's a follow up, right? Or is that a new one? So it's a placeholder item that we've had on the agenda for the last three meetings. We'll keep it on the agenda moving forward. I did have a request that um, I thought would fit under this, um, but it's actually going to be something that is removed from consideration. I reviewed the policies in advance, and uh, the deviation request in this instance was to use an ADA spot and uh, the adopted code portion included a prohibition of ADA spots on private property. So it wasn't a guideline, it was a code prohibition. So I'm gonna let that business know that there's not an option for them to use that space. So that was what I had intended to bring in front of you to review that site plan and their proposal, but um, I am pulling that from consideration and letting them know that's not an option. So that's all that I have uh, for today. So apologies for no, no, it makes it easy. Extra expectation, yeah. <laughs> that's it for today. We we agree with you. That's that. Perfect. Yes. Follow the codes. Are good. That's a good policy. Easy <laughs> makes it easy. Okay. So you didn't need to come down to say that, Jonathan. <laughs> I was Wait. curious about the, the oh, one okay. before as well. So okay. and then I'm heading on to the budget meeting from here. Okay. All right. Well, we can wrap up then. Yeah, I move that we adjourn the meeting to the next meeting. On June 15th at 3. I second that. Aye. In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. My pleasure.